talk, talk, talk to me Tuesday. Hey there, welcome to Talk To Me Tuesday on a Tuesday. I'm your host, Madi B. And to we, today we have a special guest, Hello. attorney Rochelle Guyton. We have a new attorney on the set. So we're going to get to know you a little bit better here. So I hope you're ready for these I'm ready. questions. I'm ready. Okay, I think we're all ready for you too. <laughs> um, so we want to welcome you guys on the show. Again, you guys know the drill. Open up those lines of communication if you guys have any question. Any questions for our new attorney, Rochelle Guyton? So let's turn it over. You are a special guest, and I've gotten the pleasure to really meet you, but I want our viewers sure. to kind of get to know you a little bit more. Um, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself, where you come from, where you went to school, all that good stuff. Sure. So um, I'm from a small town called Luling, Louisiana. Mm. Uh, my whole family is there. My mom, I came from a large family. So my mom's the last of nine. My dad's the last of five. Wow. And so it, family is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And we pretty much all grew up in the same small, you know, small town, um, just outside of New Orleans, went to the same high schools and things like that. And wow. so I've always been able to, you know, holidays are coming up. Yeah. And always been able to celebrate that with my family. Um, I went to Hornville High School. Shout out to some of my friends yes. that are watching. Um, and then I went to my undergraduate at Northwestern State University. Okay. And then I went to law school at Loyola University. Cool. And um, so that's those are my alma maters. And wow. I graduated from Loyola in 2008. Nice. So yeah. if you guys are from Louisiana and you guys are watching, make sure you guys give us a little heart just so that we know that you're here representing. Um, so let me ask you this. Do you cook a lot of food from like New Orleans, Louisiana? I don't know if I can say a lot, but I okay. do cook. Ooh. Yes, I do cook. We might need to have a cooking show with yeah. you on here. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> as long as we can do some Cajun food. Yes. Some, some shrimp. That'd be awesome. Yes. We all love it. Especially here in Houston, it's such a melting pot. It's awesome to kind of see um, those different blends. Yes. So that's great yes. that you can cook it. I'm sure your family is super excited oh, yes. at home to be eating that type of oh, meal. Oh, yeah, all the time, <laughs> yes. Crawfish and oh, and all wow. kinds of fun stuff. Now, yes. we're going to get in a little bit deeper into the food sector here in a little bit. Um, but before we do that, I want you to tell us, um, I think attorneys are very interesting. You know, there's all walks of life on why you guys even chose this path. So what inspired you in particular, or what's your story, and what got you in the path of being an attorney? So initially, I actually went to law school for a different reason and didn't go to actually practice or be an attorney. Mm. I graduated in undergrad in broadcasting and uh, minored in English, and I liked being, um, we did live productions at my undergrad. So this is and just fun stuff like that. Home. Where, I, well, I it's been a while. It's yeah. Been a while. And so you're going to have to like kind of warm me up to it. You're but doing great. I loved it. I love being in broadcasting and I wanted to be a legal or a political correspondent. Mm. And so that was why I went to law school initially. And then, of course, while I was in law school, I got to do some really fun internships at the Louisiana Courts of Appeals. I got to um do a clerkship at the 24th Judicial District Court in St. Charles Parish, which is a small wow. town where I'm from. Yeah. And I loved being in a courtroom. And mm. so being there and getting to watch, you know, live court and meeting attorneys and interacting, I realized that I liked being in the courtroom. Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. that was how I kind of transitioned while I was in law school and, you know, thought, oh, I could be good at this. Yeah. And so went straight into out of law school. You know, I took the bar and both. Texas and Louisiana. Oh, two. Woo. And um, and worked at the Montgomery County DA's office and got to be a trial lawyer. And that's pretty much what I've been doing. Both, nice. You know, before working here, getting to to, to try cases. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. So for those viewers, I'm going to ask a lot of questions now because you kind of opened it up. So you, we are ready here. So for those people that are watching that are not necessarily quite sure what a trial lawyer is, can you explain a little bit more in depth on what exactly you guys do? 
Sure. So at the district attorney's office, it, you know, I was a criminal attorney. And so I worked on filing criminal complaints mm. um, and informations and then thereafter indictments and would charge people criminally for their mm. offenses. And then I would work that case up from that the day of filing all the way up until if it settled or, you know, we negotiated a mm. deal and then thereafter trial if it didn't work out. And so I literally would develop that case from beginning to end, wow. you know, getting all the, the information and documents together, talking to all the witnesses and then going to trial and practicing before a judge and making arguments and opening statements and closing arguments and, you know, all the, the, the whole, fun, yeah. you know, hard work that comes with, with yeah. you know, being in court, in trial, in impromptu practice of law. That's yeah. awesome. And I know there's different types of legal professions within the law world so trial attorneys i just want to be kind of very clear you guys actually go in front of a jury in front of a judge kind of what we see on tv yes. that is expected for every attorney not every attorney does that but that's exactly what you got the yeah. experience of doing yes which yes. is awesome yeah so it would be you can do that in in all realms of our areas of law it doesn't yeah. have to just be in criminal law so like right. here i'm on the litigation team and so I will eventually when it comes to that hopefully get to try some cases yeah um, and be awesome. in a courtroom and 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 work work my cases through trial that's awesome so tell us how many years have you been an attorney so I have been licensed for almost 10 years mm. um, in Texas and almost 11 in Louisiana okay so Oh, so I was just going to ask you which one came first. So I'm guessing I it was did. Louisiana State yes, Bar first yes, and then Texas. Yes. Back to back? Yes. Oh, you weren't playing, huh? <laughs> I wow. Did, I did. Okay. So I went to school in Louisiana, and um, as you may know and others may not, but Louisiana um, is the only civil state, mm -hmm. and they practice under what's called the Napoleonic Code. Mm -hmm. And so the bar is significantly different than the bar here in Texas, and so I'd gone to school there and had already studied um, most, if not all, of the law that I needed to, to be prepared for the bar, and right. so I went on and, and took the Louisiana bar right. first, and then took and the then Texas you had bar. to did you have to kind of restudy because the Texas bar is very different. I did. Okay, I did. it's different material, different topics. It's a completely different style of bar. Louisiana bar is all essay. Um, full long essays and then the Texas bar has kind of a mixture of short essay and multi uh, multiple choice questions wow so, yeah, it's very different that is so if you guys any of you guys out there watching that are going to law school now I think you guys can come on the show and ask the attorneys pick their brain sure. on their experience yeah. I think that's awesome to kind of hear you know different people go through uh, different things as far as how they study their procedures some it comes a little bit more natural some you got to really work hard right. so I think it's great to kind of hear um, the experiences Absolutely. of certain attorneys Absolutely. and I think that's important if you are studying for the bar to kind of get an idea of what it's like, what are some different study styles that different people use so that you can kind of explore absolutely. that before sitting and taking the bar. Yeah, yeah for I sure. Think that's absolutely important. I agree. So now what you weren't you just got to this law firm, D. Miller and Associates. So tell us a little bit about what you were doing prior to this law firm and you what your experience kind of look like or sounded like. Sure. So um, like I said I worked at the Montgomery County District Attorney's office and um, I had been there for about nine and a half years and um, most recently had been working on sexual assault cases mm -hmm. and internet crimes against children. So that includes child pornography, sexual performance of a child, things like that. Um, and also had worked on human trafficking cases. Mm -hmm. And so just as of the last few years at the DA's office, I think the bulk of my work had been with um, child sex crimes, sexual assault cases, and then of course that all you know also worked on other types of cases throughout my tenure there. Yeah, and I know sexual assault is something huge. I know we are doing it here at D. Miller and Associates, but also human trafficking. I definitely recommend you guys if you haven't seen the show already. We did have a past show in regards to human trafficking, so you guys can always go to YouTube channel and check out that episode. I know we're gonna have more episodes with Attorney Rochelle Guyton and kind of to. speaking yes. a little bit more in depth about that um now i want you to kind of talk to us a little bit about the 
transition from where you were and where you're at now, which this law firm is personal injury. And maybe you could speak a little bit about what the difference is here and then the things that you're excited about. I sure. mean, there's different excitements that come with both, Absolutely. right? So, you know, it's kind of, it's funny. Um, I've joked and said, you know, I almost feel like I'm fresh out of law school mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because it's different. It's very different coming from the criminal world and working in, um, you know, one criminal courthouse or excuse me, criminal building. And then there's four district courts and they're all in the same building. And mm -hmm. I'm working out of that and I'm working in Montgomery County. And those are um, primary, that's always gonna be my jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And so now coming into a personal injury law firm that, you know, kind of spans the entire country, you know, and we have to be able to grasp the law in all of those different jurisdictions and, you know, be ready to provide advice and be able to practice in all, all of right. those different jurisdictions. Um, but what I love about it being here is kind of the same reason that I love being a prosecutor. I was always victim oriented. Mm -hmm. Um, so always kind of a plaintiff's attorney at heart Yeah. and, um, being able to be a kind of a public servant. Yeah. And so I feel like I'm able to do those same things here because we still represent plaintiffs. I still am able to be a voice for someone when they are unable to be a voice for themselves and right. kind of stand up to the, the people that that hurt someone right um and so that's kind of, you know i'm still able to fulfill my passion yeah there, so well i love that i'm hearing that so here at d Miller associates we have a lot of type of case types so we do personal injury and i know what you are more so overseeing is more the coast to coast sexual assault which we are on the civil side so talk a little right. bit about what your role is here um, as far as why you're having to learn pretty much all the states. Right, so, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm right now, I'm primarily working on the sexual assault, sex trafficking cases, and if those cases need to be filed in other states around the country, I'm gonna have to be aware of and fluent in what the laws are in that state. You know, so for example, right now, I'm working on a case where they're doing several depositions, and so I need to know what are the rules and regulations for depositions in that particular state so that when my clients are coming up for those depositions or called for depositions that I can prepare them for their testimony. We know what all the rules and regulations are. I can be able to you know, protect their rights and, um, and, and, and do it well. Right. And, you know, so whatever state that we're in, you know, we're having to make sure that, that, that we're up on the law there. Yeah, it's absolutely. Important. And I know just for those of you guys that are watching, um, it's the case type is more on the mass tort level, Correct. which is more of um, the whole United States federal level, yes. which is totally different. I just want to be clear from the personal injury, right, which right. is state so, bound. Right. Well, you can still have mass tort cases um, filed in state court. Mm -hmm. and we, we actually do have several that are filed mm -hmm. in the state court. Um, but what would be different about it, and rather than having just one specific individual claim, we represent sort of like a whole class of people. Mm -hmm. um, so we could have a number of clients that are um, aligned with a particular case mm -hmm. um, or defendant mm -hmm. and we have to you know acute you know we accumulate all these cases but I have to know each one of those clients specific facts yeah um, and what their needs are what they you know what they want for their case um, and be able to represent each one specifically even though you know we represent them as, as a, a larger class if yeah that makes sense. yeah absolutely um, so tell us a little bit of um, the type of difficulties or challenges that you face in what you're doing right now which at the firm you're doing sexual assault sexual abuse um, a little bit of human trafficking etc um, tell us about any type of maybe um, challenges that you may have faced already if not any so, you know, I don't know that I've come across very many challenges. Um, it's been kind of a smooth transition of me coming over into the civil world and working in mass tort. 
but I have seen um, some things that I would like to kind of tweak mm -hmm. um, in this area, just in that dealing with sexual assault victims or survivors mm -hmm. is what I would rather say. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, it's kind of a dynamic um, type of survivor. And I think that they're owed certain type of treatment mm -hmm. um, in dealing with their cases. And so like, for example, one of those things having to speak about their case over and over and over right. again. And so that's one of the dynamics, right? It's easier. It could be easier to talk about a car accident rather than, a, you know, an Absolutely. incident of sexual assault. And so those are the, some of the things that I um, kind of view as a difficulty um, on the civil side mm -hmm. and, and requiring them to kind of talk about those things and, mm -hmm. and hope that, you know, I can kind of ignite some um, changes like throughout the state or the country. To, to recognize that, you know, they shouldn't have to relive this over and over right, again. Right, That's a strong ro role because <laughs> I know um, you are speaking on behalf of women and men, both. Um, unfortunately, we are in a world that we are experiencing that. Um, if there's someone that's watching right now that may just want to speak to you, um, right now we're not going into depth of that case type, but sexual assault, sexual abuse, uh, human trafficking that's on the collegiate um, yes. institutional, uh, church, priests, all that good stuff. How can someone receive some type of help if they need assistance in regards to Absolutely. getting in touch I mean, with you? The easiest way is to call me. Just mm -hmm. give me a call. The number will show up on the screen, but it's 713-850-8600. Mm -hmm. And you just simply reach out to us and, um, and you will be able to speak with someone directly about your case and how we can help. Yeah, and like you mentioned before, that isn't um, easy. I know your story is super important to us, um, but you know, being able to come up in the forefront as a survivor and speaking your story, that's where you guys take pride on going Absolutely. out there and speaking their story for them. So um, if you guys need any help or any other questions into a little bit more depth, we're here to help. Again, that information is on the screen, if not in the comment section. We do have some comments here. We have Laura saying, represent Ro. Um, so hi, Laura. Um, we have Chriselle saying, perfect addition to the legal heroes of D. Miller. Seeing it in female form is so powerful. Oh, so I love true. It. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. That is so true. Um, Laura saying, yes, Rose present is powerful, mommy. Um, so that was from Laura again. And then Jonathan is saying, great interview. Oh, yes. thank you. <laughs> so, so far, we got some people, you know, um, being really. Um, adapted and receptive to this interview and meeting you. Our Great. new addition to the firm, you guys probably have seen it in our social media and we've already introduced you to the social media world, but it's also great to see you here live. They get to see um, you speaking. You know, you look really powerful in that picture that's on the screen, but she's super sweet. You know, we gotta, you guys gotta look tough at times, yes, right? So yes. um, she's super sweet. You guys, if you have any questions for her, she is here. So now we're gonna switch a little bit we have some holidays coming yes. up yes yes so, so we want to talk about that and kind of get to know you a little bit better sure. as far as how you are as an attorney um in the holidays what you um live for aspire by your family yes. all that good stuff so what are your plans for thanksgiving so holidays are everything yes my, like my house my family um, Thanksgiving, I mean, just any time that we can spend together. I have three kids, and so we just, it's all, it's all about family time. Yes. And, you know, at any time, especially, you know, my husband and I have, both have demanding jobs. And yeah. so um, we try to make sure when the holidays come around that we can put that side, you know, that time aside yeah. and spend it with family. So I'm Good. super excited about the holidays. Good. Are you going to be staying here in Houston or are you yes. going back home? I'll be here. Okay. And my parents will be traveling to nice. Houston this year, yay. Awesome. Um, and spending Thanksgiving and Christmas with us. Oh, and yes. Christmas, that's yes. awesome. Yes. So they will all, the children will love to see grandparents oh, yes. here, and you yes. would also love to have, who doesn't love to have their parents right, in town? Right. Um, so what are some things that you and your family do on Thanksgiving? Any traditions that you guys may have? So I don't know that we necessarily have like any strong traditions, except that when my mom comes from, from New Orleans or just outside New Orleans, she has to make gumbo. So I am expecting it, if she's watching, I'm oh. expecting some gumbo for Thanksgiving and okay. then maybe again for Christmas. But that 
that pretty much is like the biggest thing that we kind yeah. of expect for Thanksgiving. And then, of course, we do football and Hallmark movies and just nice. like, you know, some good family fun, laughter. Yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. that's always great because yeah. you get to really enjoy. You are so wrapped up in the life and just, you know, super busy day yes. to day. So it's great to really take a second Reflect back of your roots, yes. where you came from, and really enjoy family time. And eat time. some good food. And eat some good food. <laughs> Speaking of good yes. food, here at DML and Associates, we have something that we have called a DMA Family Cookbook, which is one of, um, a, we feature home recipes from the attorneys yes. themselves. So before we get to talking about your recipe, <laughs> let's take a look at that video now. Okay. Almost everything seafood. Okay. Shra crawfish, shrimp. I love to cook with it. Um, and that's kind of what I guess what I would consider or maybe my family would consider kind of my specialty. Mm. Um, if, if they had to pick a meal that I make, I think that's their favorite. That would probably be their favorite. Nice. And so. And tell everyone, just in case they missed it because it kind of turned the page, what was the favorite meal? So it's crawfish and shrimp fettuccine. Mm. And it's really, really good. And, you, and, and it's fun because you can kind of make of it what you want. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to make it as spicy as I might make it. You right. can put as much spice as you want. Yeah. And if you like to have andouille, um, I like to add andouille sausage. Nice. Um, it's a little Cajun sausage that yeah. you can dice up and it kind of adds a little bit of a flav different flavor to it. Um, but that's that's why I picked it. It's nice. fun and you know, you can spice it up a little bit if you want to. So you're a spicy girl. And what a I mean by that, is. you like spicy food. Yes. Nice. Yes, I do. I probably am not at a ten, ten being really spicy. I'm kinda like at a three or four. Uh, might be at maybe like a five or six. You're at a five or six. Yes. Okay. Like I like jalapenos in my popcorn. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah, a, yeah. I guess I am a little bit of a spice girl. Spicy, yes. yeah, spicy, which is <laughs> all good. There is a. There's more recipes on that book that you guys can really um, take a look at, and if you guys have family night or doing a cooking night, make sure you look at those recipes. I think that'd be super yes. fun to try something different, which if you guys have never tried this type of fettuccine, it'd be awesome for you guys to give it a try with your family and. Vice versa. Yes. If you haven't tried some of those other recipes, that would be great. I will. I will. I yeah. actually saw, I think someone had a, ri a broccoli rice casserole. Mm -hmm. It looks really good. Yeah. I think it was a nouge. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm gonna you never know. Give it a try. Exactly. Um, so, we do have a couple more comments. We have Laura still on saying, <laughs> gumbo is coming. Yes. Yes. And then I have Destiny saying, gumbo, LOL, yes. yes. <laughs> I love it. I we love are it. Ready. Everyone is ready for the holidays. <laughs> I love it. So this is actually our last show before the holidays, oh. before Thanksgiving holidays. Okay. Let's be clear. And then after Thanksgiving, we're going to have another show because the next week is kind of intense to yes. kind of have a show. Everyone's already, you know, prepping now, prepping with their Christmas tree, prepping with the supplies, grocery store. Go shopping beforehand because yes. the, the grocery store will be on yes. and popping yes. next week. Yes. So if you don't like those long lines, get started yes. now. Or online. 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 <laughs> or online, yes. Now everything is the luxury of that. Um, so 
after Thanksgiving, okay, Thanksgiving's on a Thursday, which is um, going to be almost a week and a couple of days from now, okay, after that is a really big, important day. We, you know, the holiday has made, turned it into something, you know, huge, obnoxious, which is Black Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it actually starts on Thursday. It does. After you eat, people already start going to lines. So tell me, are you the girl that does the Black Friday shopping thing? So I do, but I'm a little conservative. Like Thanksgiving is important to me. That's family time. Mm -hmm. You know, I typically wouldn't sh cut my Thanksgiving short to do Black Friday or Thursday shopping. Yeah. Um, so I still have that family time. And then I'm a little bit more of an online shopper. Mm. So I like to get my deal and not have to go wait in long lines yes. or deal with crazy crowds. And so I'll get online and find my deals and I might have my list of things nice. that I want and do some pre-Christmas shopping. Yeah, and, that's yeah. awesome. And I know they have Black Friday, okay, which extends a little bit out to Saturday and Sunday. And they have Cyber Monday. Yes. So this is like four days of shopping. But it's, they have great doorbusters, great deals. We're going to be putting all over our channels and social media um, things for you guys to look out. Uh, some doorbusters and some great deals if you guys are those people that stand in line. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, but if you are the cyber, we also yes. will be giving you guys great deals and what to do. We're also going to be giving you guys things to entertain like the people that don't like to oh, shop. Oh, yeah. So we're going to be putting some, make sure you follow our social <laughs> media page. I think it would be great. You guys will let us know what you think. Um, it'd be great to kind of see our social media. So most people are already starting to um, decorate for the holidays. After Thanksgiving, people decorate like their trees and all that good stuff. So have you already started the Christmas so decorating? I have my tree up already. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. I'm that nice. girl. I'm that girl. Um, already have, I have one tree up. I have another one that we're going to work on this weekend. Nice. But putting the tree up is a big deal in my house. My yeah. kids love it. I have a huge 12 foot tree that nice. we put up. And, yeah. So it's a lot of fun. And it is already up oh, and yes. ready to go. Ready to go. That's yes. awesome. And yes. you know what? It's okay. Cause I'm that girl too. <laughs> I started putting up the decorations this last weekend yes. because during the holidays, I actually travel out of town. So I don't get to do the whole Christmas tree like at my house. I do it from my um, family's home. So I would like to come back and it's yes. already done. Yes. And out there. And it That's just makes your like. house feel like Christmas. It does. Right? And you have yes. to kind of do the scent, the candles, yes. the Christmas mo movies. Stockings. If, if yes, you commit, whole... you just have to commit. Mm -hmm. There are other <laughs> holidays. I do want to be clear. Um, for those that don't celebrate the Christmas, there is Hanukkah that's also coming up. So we'll be doing a lot of stuff with the Hanukkah and the menorah. Um, that's also really great. So we do um, honor other um, practices as well from the holiday season. So we do have more comments. You got a lot okay. of love today, girl. <laughs> so we have Ivan saying, Ivo Gumbo Row, we need the gumbo with a little heart. <laughs> yes. We have Jonathan saying, I'm ready for the gumbo too, cuz. <laughs> um, Destiny saying, we wait for the Cyber Monday show sales. Okay. Yes, yes. So everyone is, um, love how everyone's in on the show today and kind of um, admiring the holidays coming up. I think it's such an important time. Um, Thanksgiving is so important and we want to reflect in really why we're here and why Thanksgiving is here. Um, not only that, but it's a time of giving, a time to receive, but receive a lot of love, yes. a lot of um, food and just family time. It's not really about just the gift giving. Right. So really reflecting on why we're here and why we celebrate that. I think it's really important. We do have more comments. Jeanette is saying, here for the tree being up already. Definitely that girl, too. Hey, hey. awesome. <laughs> Jeanette, high yes. five on that one. Those, That's the girl power right there. You know, you got to be proactive on putting right? up the tree. The guys are probably rolling their eyes right now like, <laughs> these girls are too much. Too extra. <laughs> yeah, but they wouldn't do it, so it's all good. Um, so speaking of trees, we have something called heroic behavior. Yes. And I know you know about it. I um, do. This is your first time on the show, but you actually already been kind of all up on the show and kind of seeing what we do here. So heroic behavior is when we give a free item every month 
to be a hero in our community. Love it. It's the yes. behavior that we do out there. So this month, in the month of November, we're giving out a Christmas tree for the month of December. Which is awesome. It's yes. super cool. Yes. We actually go out with the winners and they get to pick their tree. So if you're down, oh, that's awesome. we go. It's super awesome because some you can pick a tall, skinny, and they're natural trees. Yeah. You can pick short, plumpy, Charlie all Brown. that. All that. The Charlie <laughs> right. Brown tree is there too. Last month, we actually gave um, the dinner meal for Thanksgiving. So we're going to go shopping this week, okay. if not early next week, with those winners so that they can have their turkey and their meal ready to go. That is awesome. Yeah, yes. so we do that every month. Now, do you know what they have to do to win the prize? One I out don't. of four. You don't. So what they have to do, the picture is on the screen. All you have to do is like our Facebook page. Super easy. Go right now. Click the little like button on our page. Then if you go see this picture, which is on our news feed, make sure you go like this picture. Tag someone that you would also want them to win a tree or you're going to spend the holidays with and share it on your Facebook page. You have to do all four to qualify, all four for a chance to win. You do have to be 18 years or older, and you have to be present to win. All right. Super you easy. Just do it. All yes. you need is one finger to do all that press. Double click like, double click like, tag. It's super easy and it's free. Right, a brand new Christmas tree. A brand new Christmas yes. tree. And if you already have one up, that's okay. You can have another one. Right. Right. You get. Well, you have I, two. Yes. Yes. I have one in my home, and then my family's home. We have two upstairs, downstairs. So hey, it's never too many trees. Right. Christmas right. trees. Right. You I can agree. decorate them all different. So what's the theme of your Christmas tree? So I um, I don't have necessarily a theme. I have colors. So okay. mine is basically gold and kind of an off-white. Nice. However, because I'm a local, you know, NOLA girl, New Orleans girl, yeah. I take all my Christmas decorations down uh -huh. after Christmas, and I decorate it Mardi Gras until after Mardi Gras season. Oh, that's so, cute. So, yeah, then I have my purple gold and green up for Mardi Gras. That's so I have, super cute. Yeah, Mardi Gras up until about February. So it's so. okay for her to yes. have her tree past January. Yes. I know a lot of people Seasonal. are like, it's still, it's January or February, you still have your tree. And I'm like, yeah, I yeah, still have my tree. But it's fun. <laughs> yes. It's seasonal. And yeah. it's all, all for Mardi Gras. And that's kind of my, you know, my way of celebrating when I'm not able to go home. And yeah. Celebrate. I yeah. love that. I think that's great for you guys to um, do that and practice that. Take the ornaments of Christmassy off yes. and Celebrate something else. There's February. There's Valentine's Day. You yes. could do a lot of hearts. There's a lot of things that you could do, which is awesome. So that is awesome. So, yeah, we have more comments coming up. Um, so Damontre is saying, hubby and kids are proud of you, Ro. Thankful for <laughs> DMA for taking on the most powerful lady in Houston. You are all rock and have an awesome team. Aww. So sweet. <laughs> I have Wendy saying, hey, Ro, with a heart. Yes. So sending hearts hey. back for sure. <laughs> Beautiful comments. I love the love that you're receiving already. Um, it already shows that you're making a difference not only in your community, in this space, in this law firm, which is beautiful. You should be very proud uh, to be lot. here. Yes, this is awesome. I have also more comments. Laura saying, awesome. D. Miller and Associates for your work in the community. God bless. Laura is also saying, what about the saints? LOL. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to get a, a shout out for New Orleans about the same. <laughs> yes, exactly. So a lot of our uh, Houstonians yes. and not Texas fans may be a little bit like, you know, rivalry there. But, you know, we, we send a lot of love to everyone and all the NFL teams, which there's going to be some games going on yes. too, which is awesome. Let us know in the comment section who you'll be watching. Let us know in the comment section what you guys will be doing for Thanksgiving. Also, what does your tree look like? What is that yes. theme, yes. color, all that good stuff? Yeah, I think that's super can awesome. Comment a picture. Send a picture. Oh, yes. yes. I would trees. love I would love to see the picture. I also have Ivan now saying the Guyton family is amazing and Rochelle <laughs> will be the tremendous leader and thought. Um, leader for D. Miller and Associates. Uh, thanks, super Robin. sweet, super sweet. So now we're going to switch it up a little bit um, on our social media. Now we do have a lot of channels. I know we're talking right now about Thanksgiving, our Christmas tree. We're going to be doing different things on every channel. We're doing a lot of posts um, for Black Friday and stuff like that. 
So just to mention, and I know you know, it's on the screen right now, what are other channels that we do have as far as a law firm, d Miller & Associates? Right, so I think you have um, Instagram mm -hmm. and Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Yes, we all have all those. those. Yeah. And Facebook, we do have it in English and Spanish. And then we also have LinkedIn. So if you guys are any of those users, like adamant users and love Instagram, go on there, like yes. our page. We're putting up different stuff. You'll see our friend here, Attorney Rochelle Guyton, <laughs> which there's a lot of love and support. So support our attorneys yes, as well please. in everything they do. Yes, yes. Yeah, some of the things that we're gonna be doing also coming up is giving a lot to the community. I know you've already been a part of it, giving, um, giving to the community as far as our children we went to the hospital yes. with the um, children in their journey for cancer we'll be doing some more stuff and i think it's very awesome and rewarding so i don't know if you want to speak a little bit about what that experience was for oh, you oh it was great and and it's one of the big reasons why i like working here because i could still have that community outreach mm -hmm. um and so it was real. it was a lot of fun to go to the hospital and just kind of put a smile on their face even if it was just for five minutes for a day however long it was you know it was worth it it was worth Absolutely. our time you know stepping out of the office and just being able to provide something that would make someone else happy yes um, I agree. and so I, I really am fond of our office for being able to do that and yes. always being um, community conscious yes um, about all of that so yes. yeah and I definitely want to open up if you guys have any opportunity for giving to the community if you have any programs anything that we could do to make a difference I know whether it's it's women, children, men, motorcycle, traumatic brain right. injury. We are really involved in the community Absolutely. about helping others. So if we are here walking our um, path of life and we can help someone and grab someone by the hand along the way, we will right. definitely Let's do, do that. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. So let us know if you guys have any opportunities. Um, we are super much involved. You're going to be doing something um, coming up. Uh, we're adopting a family. Yes. And one of our Adopting the Family is for Heroes for Children. We will be out there with the families and the children on their journeys, but, you know, putting a smile on their face that they're just not able to because they are in the hospital right. or their journey is really getting all their finances right. and they right. can't. Especially during the holidays. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's a time where the kids deserve to have that smile and have that experience. So um, definitely something amazing that we're doing around here. We'd like to do it with you guys. So if you guys have any opportunity, would love to be with you guys again. Um, so I do this with everyone that comes on the show. Uh -oh. So if you have to leave our viewers with any last comments or um, quotes or anything, what would you leave our viewers with? Oh gosh, let me think. Um, well, I have a, I have a quote that I love um, by an author, and it says, "Evil cannot uh, evil cannot vanquish evil, and dark can only darken and go deeper. Mm. But the light is the keenest of weapons." And that's one of my favorite quotes. Um, and I just always think of that, and especially like when we talk about hero heroic behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, like just being the light wherever you can, wherever you go. You know, it, it's kind of like a ministry. Wherever yeah. you go, you can have a ministry, and you yeah. can be the light and be, you know, a hero. So I love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what we stand by. I love that quote. Um, you guys are known for your legal heroes, but not just a hero um, for someone in the legal space and making their um, story just out there and known for there to be some type of civil or mm -hmm. justice, but also in the community. Right. So your heroic behavior is um, shown in different ways and different lights. So that is awesome. I love that quote. Um, and I want to thank all of you guys for being on yes. the show today. I want to thank you guys for tuning in and making sure that you share this video because the more you share, the more knowledge is spread out with your friends as well. Um, I want to thank you for also liking our video as well. And thank you for tuning in to Talk To Me Tuesday on a Tuesday with your host, Mari B and Attorney yes. Rochelle.